So I was going to start by fake enthusiastically shouting and, and pretending to be really excited about the fact that Japan was number one. I was uh, number one in vaccinations. So Canada has been number one in vaccinations for months now. Japan last week surpassed Canada. Uh, they are now... I didn't write actually. No, I must have. Oh, they other side of the page. Edit that part out. Japan is seventy five point five percent vaccinated, completely. Canada is seventy five point three percent. So I was gonna be like, oh, that that point two percent. That's the point two percent of losers. Your your uh, moose fuckers. Just slurs. That's what I was going to do. Uh, but today is actually a national holiday, so my kids are at home, my wife is at home, so I think me shouting swears in my room isn't really the the best option for the moment. So I might even be a little more low-key because I'm a little self-conscious that uh, they're going to hear me and stuff. There's an interesting, an interesting comparison to America because America, they're freaking out. they got mandates. they got things in the, the, the freedom fighters of America the unvaccinated they say mandates are wrong and stuff Japan actually did 75.5% with no mandates and so that actually was a big concern because they're like oh, maybe people just won't get it That's in Japan the constitution they can't force you to get it and I bet Americans think the constitution protects them but apparently not because you have mandates there's some one theory that the reason Japan's vaccination is rate is so high is because it started late so then people started being like, oh, maybe I can't get it. So now I want it. So maybe that's actually the uh, best best way. Maybe that's something you got to do, though, is like make them want it, which is something I've got to learn to do. But all, all I really want to say is Canada sucks ass. It's the worst country in the world uh, because number two is really just the first loser. 55% of kids in Japan are vaccinated. Uh, oh, no, no, no. 55% of kids in Japan, so they're talking to the kids who are not like uh, under 12 years old, are eager to get vaccinated. So five years old to 11 years old will start next February, probably. It hasn't actually been 100% decided yet. Uh, second and third grade kids, it's 50%. Fourth and fifth grade kids, it's 60%. And they're basically thinking when they interviewed some kids was saying that like, you know, if you're immunized, you can play with your friends. And 70, 70, 70 to 76% of parents want to get their kids vaccinated soon. Only 23% of parents are against getting their kids vaccinated in Japan. Uh, they're worried. Japan, number one, Canada, garbage. JR West. So there's two main companies in Japan that run the trains. It's JR West and JR East. And then there's Meitetsu. Oh, I should not get into all the train lines. But anyways, they're having a bullet train, a Shinkansen, just for vaccinated people. Uh, or you have to have a negative PCR test. So I was a little bit disappointed. when they Because the, the title was, JR West will have a bullet train for just vaccinated people, which made it sound like it's now an exclusive club. Uh, but it's not. So basically, they're just like, we. you have to get checked before you can go on. It's, it's, it's way less exciting. Shin Osaka to Fukuoka, it's part of a tour package. Uh, they're going to have 200 passengers on the Shinkansen, so it's not full capacity. Uh, they basically charted the whole thing. They're, you have to disinfect your hands, which just means like, you know, some, some tepika, which is the Japanese version of Purell. You need to, you need to, to wash your hands, do a temperature check, uh... It was 17,800 yen a person. Yeah, that includes accommodation, though. And it was just so that people could feel safe on the train, knowing that everyone there is vaccinated or has had a recent PCR test. But again, the PCR test, maybe I got COVID 20 minutes after I got the PCR test. The PCR test is, uh, I'm not happy. I, um, let's put it this way. No, I'm going to have to cut that story. That was so garbage. <laughs> I probably won't now, just because I'll leave it in. People like to hear me not do stuff well, which I find weird, but that's the way it is. Kids 
since we're talking about bullet trains, kids can ride on the bullet trains for free uh, starting tomorrow. Yes, starting tomorrow to December 19th. So today is November 23rd. It's going to be November 24th. Uh, so like you can go to Tokyo and Nagoya. It's a garbage city. Kyoto, Osaka, and Hakata. Uh, you pay for the reservation ticket. And you will get the refund two weeks later. So let's say I want to take my two kids. I think they're actually too old. But I want to take my two kids. And we go on the Shinkansen. I pay for three tickets. We have our trip. Then we can, we'll, I, then two weeks later, I will get a refund for the money I spent on the kids. Yeah, it's kids 6 to 11 and up to five kids. So Jeff, you're not bringing your whole baseball team. Uh, you can cut that plan, not for free. Jeff's a dick. Having people at home has made me far less enthusiastic uh, because I feel like I have to stay a little quieter. And then holidays, and then next week. Basically what I'm saying is the podcast Ninja News Japan is going to suck for the next two weeks. <laughs> Today, uh, the problem is there's people in the house and I'm feeling self-conscious, so I'm talking actually really quietly. Uh, next week, I'm going to be really rushed because i got to go do a checkup in the afternoon. So I got to go to the hospital and that takes hours. So that's most of my day gone. So uh, please don't judge Ninja News Japan on these two episodes. Judge it on, I'll have to pick the best one. But there's like 150 episodes up on the internet. Judge it on uh, some sort of amalgamation of those. <sighs> Corona virus. Uh, they're going to do boosters in Japan, which I'm happy about. Uh, because I really don't want to get coronavirus. I want to stop wearing a mask. I, I want to grow a beard again, which is a weird thing to want to do. But wearing the mask makes my beard really matted, and it's really bad for my skin. But they're going to do mix and match. Now, this is something I talked about. When I first got the vaccination, I was, like, talking to people and my own theory that you should get the same vaccination tw twice. So I got the Pfizer and then I was like, well, of course it makes sense that I would get Pfizer again. And I talked to my friends, do you think it would be good or bad? Again, no scientific study here. Would it be good or bad to get like Pfizer one time and Moderna the second time? And everyone pretty consistently said, no, you should get the same one twice. And I was like, yeah, I think that too, but why? Because it doesn't actually seem like that's important or necessary. And then a scientific study came out like two, three weeks later and that scientific study said mixing it was actually better. You got stronger response of your body and more of the things that you need in your body, the word I can't remember right now, to protect yourself. Uh, so it's actually better to mix. But I got two Pfizer's and now they're saying they're going to mix and match the boosters. So if I got two Pfizer's, I probably will get a Moderna, but I'm not sure. But they're not actually like going to check. They're not saying like you're going to mix and match on purpose. What they've done is realize that now it's safe to mix, that it doesn't actually matter. They're just going to get whatever's available. So when I go get my booster, I will just go and maybe I get a Pfizer again. Maybe I get a Moderna. I'm hoping to get a Moderna. I don't want Sputnik. I've been made, I've, the whole pandemic since Russia came out with Sputnik, I've been making fun of Sputnik. Uh, it just, I don't know if it's the name or I, the fact that it came from Russia. I'm thinking it's just like, Jägermeister in a needle, which would work on Russians. I mean, for the Russians I know, they would actually be like, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's how you kill diseases. Uh, most municipalities, so if you went like through the local governments, you got Pfizer. And if it went through workplaces, you got Moderna. Now that only held true for a while, but for the beginning, that was most people. Um, so basically, though, what they've found out is that it's easier. They don't have to worry about mixing the vaccines, which is nice because it means, yeah, whatever we have on hand is what we're going to use and everyone's going to be OK with that. And if I get three Pfizer's, that's OK. It, it would technically be better, but it's still OK to just get three Pfizer's or three Moderna's or whatever. Um, but yeah, Japan, number one in vaccines and it's going to be starting boosters before America even hits like. 55, I don't think they've even hit 55% because it like was, went up super fast and it just like trailed off and stopped. Way to go, America. So let's get off the, the corona train. 
it's been Corona and train news, the first two stories. So we can actually get off the Corona train now. Domino's is making a pizza with six times more toppings, which actually just sounds disgusting. Uh, and also seems like impossible to eat. And they're saying that you need to either lift the pizza with one hand and then hold the other end with chopsticks so it like forms a bridge. Like, you know, pizza flops. If you don't hold up the end, it's all just going to tower off. Or you have to eat the toppings off some of the pizza before you try to eat the pizza like you normally would. Each of these pizzas comes with Domino's branded chopsticks, which I kind of want, if I'm being honest. I really would like... I don't know if it comes with just one set. It has to come with multiple sets. But they're just going to be like little plastic or cheap ones and they save Domino's. That's not why this is interesting or exciting. Via Twitter, though, you can enter a lottery. And the lottery, so you just have to find the tweet that they mention this in and then you retweet it to your timeline and you are automatically entered to win solid gold chopsticks. Now, unfortunately... The lottery closed on November 19th, and today is the 23rd when this, this episode comes out. But, uh, and you must be in Japan. So if you're, I know that like 60, 70% of the people have listened to this podcast are in America, so uh, you guys were shit out of luck anyways. But you could win solid gold chopsticks. And so I have entered, and the winner will be announced on the 24th, which is tomorrow. So tomorrow, uh, I will be announcing that I have won solid gold chopsticks from Domino's. I'm wondering if the Domino's, so like the regular chopsticks are branded. I'm wondering if the solid gold chopsticks are also branded. And then I was wondering, are you supposed to use them? Are you supposed to keep them like a, like a keepsake? But then I'm wondering, they have no value other than they're gold, but I don't think anyone's going to buy gold chopsticks. So, so the value in my head was going up and down quite significantly because it's like it's gold and that's technically valuable. But who wants gold chopsticks? And then if they're gold chopsticks, do you use them or not use them? And if they get used, does the value go down? Like you can see the whirlwind that my brain went on. Uh, that's what I think about when I walk, Dave. Uh, the first word was corona, so I was a little panicked that it was going to be like another coronavirus story. I, I don't memorize my... You might not realize this. I don't remember. I do hold up the notes. It's not for a look. It's because I don't memorize the stories. Could I memorize 10 stories? That would be an interesting test one day. It's to sit down and try to memorize as much of the information as possible and then just try to do it all in one go and see how badly I fail. And then like fact check myself afterwards. And then we could give Ninja News Japan like a percentage of knowledge score. Because it would just be like, is my memory good? Do I get facts right? Do I remember things accurately? But anyways, anime consumption has dropped significantly, uh, except overseas. So this is in weird, interesting, basically because of the pandemic. Overseas anime consumption has increased uh, domestically. This was, okay, we're getting into numbers, which I enjoy, but then always need to be explained quite thoroughly. This year was 21.3 billion yen, which is down 775 million yen from 2019. But 2019 was a record high year. So is that a fair comparison? Because if I say this year my productivity is lower than the year I hit the highest productivity, is that a fair comparison? Because there's a weird expectation that it would be going up every single year. This is a problem with a lot of industries, is they do expect growth infinitely. Video games kind of want this. Like, they want every game they produce to sell more than the last game, when that's almost impossible. Like, there has to be, like, a stopping point, a plateau, where you really can't squeeze any more out. Like, more people are not just... just... There are only so many people who play video games. There's only so many people who will consume anime... Uh, products there's a saturation point where you've hit the maximum now because of the pandemic I thought going down 775 million yen because of a pandemic compared to your record high year wasn't that bad but of course they made it sound because it went down at all is horrendous now the thing is live entertainment so I'm assuming this is shows was down 65% 
Overseas sales accounted for 10.9 billion yen. Online went up by 20%. And new projects are still being produced. They're still being made. So I'm sorry. Because of the pandemic, yes, it's down a bit. But it actually seems fine. And this is one of the problems with all the like, let's freak out over not making as much money as we made last year. Um, yeah, that should be expected. It shouldn't be the, the surprise that you think it is. Uh, anime is fine. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Ah, we did this story a few weeks ago. And there are these people who take movies and they edit them down to about 10 minutes. And they're called fast movies. And they put them on YouTube. So you can pretend. The problem I had with this more was why? So basically, like, I tell everyone I've seen Dune. Dune is like two or three hours long. And then I I don't want to. I want everyone to think I've seen Dune, but I haven't actually watched it. So I go online and I watch the fast movie version, which is like 10 minutes. And it hits all the main plot points. And then I can talk about it, I guess. But I haven't seen the movie. It just seems weird. It seems very weird. Anyways, this is apparently a big thing. Of course it's breaking copyright. Three people were arrested. Now, their sentences have been handed out. The first person, I assume the most heinous of the fast movie people, has been given two years and a two million yen suspended sentence. So basically, if they don't get in trouble for four years they'll probably not pay anything or go to jail. The second person got one and a half years and one million yen, and the third person got one and a half years and 500,000 yen. Now, the reason, this is the interesting part maybe of this story. The reason they were punished is because they were doing it for profit. So, talked a couple of times last week and the week before, about how it's okay to sell like homemade anime. So let's say I want to make my personal Naruto comic and it's like a fanfic and I make it, I can sell it in small batches, maybe to recoup my costs, like the paper and the pens and the ink and uh, maybe a little bit of my time, but I can't, it can't be like my main job because if I'm doing it and I'm not making money, it's artistic and it's like an homage. So that's how it's considered in Japan. These videos, you could actually say it was artistic. I was trying to edit the film. I was trying to make it tighter. I was just trying to do something interesting and fun. But because they monetized it, they got punished. And that's the bit. Like, you could actually do a lot of stuff in Japan if you don't make any money. But if you make money, now it's not okay. So these guys are being punished. They were saying the judge wants to send a message. Two years in jail and two million yen is pretty severe for taking Fast and the Furious and making it fast. Let's see what I did there. But realistically speaking, they're just trying to send a message that you cannot have, uh, you can't make money off other people's copyrighted IPs, which I think is fair. We had the cake lady last week. And again, because she was making money off making Demon Slayer cakes, that's why she got in trouble. So... If you want to do fan fiction stuff, that's actually okay for the most part if you don't make any money. Oh, well, Starbucks is doing something interesting in Japan. They're going to do a test. Uh, they're going to have a, a takeout cup that you have to return. So it's going to be basically a metal tumbler. It's going to be insulated. Uh, you basically you go buy your coffee and then you drink your coffee. And then within three days, you have to bring the tumbler back. And they will wash it and use it again. They are testing this in downtown Tokyo to see if people like it. And uh, they're going to do it until May 2022. So really, they're just going to test it for about six months. And the interesting thing is that what they're going to do is use Line, so the Line Messenger app, to remind people. Or they said to manage this. But I think it's just like, you've had your cup for two days. Please return it within the next day. Or I assume you're going to be charged for the cup. Something like that. But the question is, because people are supposed to, at this point, be bringing in their own cups. They don't, you know, disposable cups and stuff are bad. But I would never remember to bring my cup because I don't drink coffee that often. 
Yeah, so it's a question of are people going to be comfortable, especially right after a pandemic, with the idea of using a cup that someone else has used, even though like we do that all the time when we go to restaurants. But I actually think it'll probably be okay. I actually would really would like that to work out. I'm big on recycling and reusing stuff. So in a stainless steel tumbler that's insulated, if you drink coffee, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Disney is making a Ironheart. It was a run of comics. It's Lady Iron Man, which I actually thought was really cool. I'd heard about this. It was Riri Williams is the character, and she's a young black girl, and she is uh, donning the Iron Man suit, and they had to change the name because it's not Iron Man anymore. I actually think you still should have called her Iron Man, and just the new Iron Man is a woman. I'm okay with that. I think stuff like that's fun, and it gets like fans really upset, which is also funny. Uh, there's a couple of pictures of her on that I've seen on the internet. I've never read any of the comics. Uh, and she's cool. She's got like a big afro. There was there was a, a thing where it was like wearing the mask and the mask was on her big afros there. I thought that looked really awesome. There is a problem though. So this comic came out in 2016 where Riri Williams was introduced. There was an adult-oriented video, which I don't want to show too much on the screen because the screenshots might show something too much, um, <clears throat> called Iron Heart in Japan. It is a documentary of how to produce babies. Now, this was produced in 2014. So there is the question going around the internet right now, was the character Iron Heart's title or name i'll just get that down a little more there's a couple pictures up there i know they're they're um, blurred out because it's japanese porn but i just want to be safe did the person who made the iron heart name name it unintentionally or intentionally after the 2014 adult video in japan which is also an Iron Man parody. So it's about a woman who gets a power suit and she uses the power suit to fight bad guys who then have sex with her, which is a little weird. I don't want to, again, get too deep into the uh, pictures because I'm sure it's going to get into dirty stuff pretty quick. But there is a synopsis of the plot. So I wanted to see maybe how much overlap there was. So there's Anne Suda is creating a power suit that has the ability to gather the planet energy. I don't know what the planet energy is, I don't know what gathering that energy will do for you, but here we are. She has the ability to gather the planet energy. Iron Heart was originally created by Anne's father, so the suit was made by her father, which is very similar because Iron Man's suit was made by Tony Stark, not Riri. Professor Suda and his partner, Professor Kirita. As the research was coming to an end, numerous troubles became disclosed. Numerous troubles. Anne and her father wanted to use it for the purpose of justice, but Karita wanted to use it as military utilization. So, <laughs> I, I read that sentence incorrectly, but it made it more correct by accident. But Karita wanted it as military utilization. So he wants, to, he wants to take it to maybe invade other countries and stuff. Iron Heart has the power to rule the world with power. So basically, if you collect the planet energy, you could be so powerful, you could rule the planet, I guess. And protects the Earth Collector and wears the iron suit to fight against evil. And so Professor Kurita's son, the Whipper, ooh, that could be the, the, the guy from the second Iron Man movie, appears and creates Iron God, retrieve the Earth Collector. So you can see some... Uh, Someone needs to take a couple English classes, uh, which I would like to say that I will offer uh, English classes. If you would like me to translate the summary of your AV, I will, I will provide that service. Ninja News Japan is now going to provide a new service. We will correct the summaries of AV videos so that the summary in English sounds like it makes sense. So basically, the question, the, the interesting part of the question is, did the creator of Ironheart see this video or reference this video? Because it's not going to be big that enough people would, but a, an, a company like Disney or Marvel are going to be pretty aware of their IPs and they're going to check these things. But then 
Japan's AV industry is actually like pretty insular. So would they have checked that? I don't know. But the IP Ironheart, I guarantee, was registered in Japan. So maybe someone ripped off someone else and Marvel owes the AV industry a little bit of money. There's a thing called Onsen Musume. So the last two weeks I've been talking about the, the, the horse girl game. That's come up twice. And it's weird because of the anthropomorphic horses. It's weird. And it's Japan. And they anthropomorphize everything to little girls. And it's weird. Well, apparently they've been doing it the whole time. Again, since 2016 that I didn't, wasn't aware of. And it made some ladies upset. Onsens. So hot springs. Uh, have been anthropomorphized into cute girls. Each one of the girls on the screen right now is supposed to represent an onsen or like a hot spring or a hot spring town or a particular hotel with hot springs or something like that. Now, it's all the, the cliches. There's uh, one girl with a short skirt. She's got a little thing on her head. There's a schoolgirl skirt. There's a girl with pink hair. Uh, there's a girl that's wearing a surprisingly short uh, red skirt in the back. I think it's supposed to be like a temple maiden. There's like a tough looking girl. Like it's, there is no trope unturned here, which is fine. Uh, again, if you care, no, I don't care. So I don't, I, I probably would have walked by pictures of those girls and not even noticed a feminist organization got upset. So someone went to a hot spring and then posted online that they were offended by the sexualization of these girls. The statement put on Twitter was, on a business trip, I saw a panel on onsen musume and wondered why they had to put something like that. I have investigated it and it is horrible. Female characters with raised skirts in sensual and daring poses with appearances of underage students and drinking alcohol. Characters of curative medicine, underage students who yearn to be sensual adult women and so on. This is all sexist and sexual exploitation. Now, I'm not even going to say she's incorrect because I have only seen pictures of the girls. And there are pictures of the girls with raised, skirt, raised skirts. The other stuff I have not seen. So I cannot honestly comment on whether it's true or not. But the people who run this campaign, they were like, uh, they think this is a good idea. And it's been running since 2016 and no one's been upset yet. So here we are. They put a statement out as well. And the statement is regarding comments, etc., on social media. There have been instances of prank calls, malicious word of mouth, insults, and discrimination against participating stores and individuals. If this continues, we will consult with a lawyer and take legal action in regards to obstructing business and defamation. Uh, if you've listened to Ninja News Japan for any amount of time, you know that obstructing business is the most common law for getting, for getting arrested because it's just so blank, it covers everything. Please have fun while taking netiquette seriously. I like that last sentence. Please have fun while taking netiquette seriously. And then there was another message later on. Regarding this uproar, we do not want fans to make immoderate remarks or social sanctions as we will proceed with objections through the appropriate unions and associations of Yubara Onsen. We appreciate your understanding and cooperation. So basically they're saying it's worked out so far. We're going to continue doing it. Leave us alone. We like our little anime girls to advertise our onsen. Uh, I do want to go a bit and find out how salacious they actually are. Because usually they're just on posters and they just do like a little pose. And that's basically it. So I, again, I've been in Japan so long. There's so many anime characters. I probably would just walk right past it and not even notice. Like I can honestly see that. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe on iTunes, Google, Spotify, or anywhere you get podcasts. You can also watch on YouTube slash Podcast or streaming on twitch.tv slash chunkmcbeefjest. You can find Ninja News Japan on Facebook. Send questions or comments to speakpipe.com slash velocipodcast. Link in the description. Check out all the podcasts in the Velocipodcast family. See McBee, Ninja News Japan, and Daily Affirmations Weekly. Please have fun while taking netiquette seriously.